How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you all how to complete this uh, free response question, um, so FRQ, for a dynamics type problem. Okay. So here, this problem states this. You've got uh, uh, two blocks and they're connected by some frictionless pulley. And uh, the string is attached to the block of M2 right here, passes over this frictionless pulley, and there is some friction on M1 in this table. Okay. And so pretty much it's going to ask us to solve for some things um, algebraically. So on the diagram below, draw and identify all the forces acting on the mass one block. So on the M1 block, if we look, notice that we have a tension pulling to our right. So here, I'm going to try to draw this right here. There's a tension pulling this way. There's a tension pulling this way. There's the weight of this object pulling down. There's the weight of M1 pulling down, call that two. And there is a normal force and there's also some force of friction. So if we look at this and we translate this to this block, notice you'll have your normal force. You'll have M1 times gravity, which is just the weight of one. And you'll have some sort of force of friction on the bottom of it, okay? So that's pretty much all it's asking for the first part. Now, B states in terms of M1 and M2, determine the minimum value of the, uh, I should say, the coefficient of static friction that will prevent the blocks from moving. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is this. What B is asking is, sorry, how much static, or what's the coefficient of static friction has to be in order for acceleration in our system, so acceleration in our system to equal zero meters per second squared. So pretty much what it's saying is how strong or how large does that coefficient have to be in order for these two systems not to move? Okay, so let's look at it like this. I'm going to kind of take this and put it right here. Now, if we look at this, the first thing we need to realize is, well, what are all of our forces acting on this system? Okay. All right. So we're going to use Newton's second law, F equals MA. All right. And notice we have M2 times gravity. These two tensions will cancel out. These two normal force and the weight, they are perpendicular to our motion. So imagine this block, this block's gonna slide this way and this block's just gonna fall straight down. And kind of notice, they'll kind of do like a little turn right here. But notice these are perpendicular to that motion. So we don't really uh, account for those. So really the only two forces that are acting on this system are the weight of, ma the, weight of the uh, M2 block and the force of friction on the M1 block. So we can actually write this out. And we're going to assume that to be, we'll assume down's positive. So we'll have M2 times gravity minus the force of friction on the one or M1 block equals MA. Well, we do not want this system to move. So pretty much we can set this M2G is equal to the force of friction on block one. Okay. So now we're getting somewhere. So now we're looking for this coefficient or we're going to solve for an, uh, an equation of us and we know that the force of friction on block one is equal to the mass of one times gravity times some coefficient of static friction remember the force of friction is just your coefficient times your normal force and in this case your normal force is equal to m1g and remember m1 is the only block that actually has friction on it Okay, so think about it that way. Some of my kids get confused sometimes. M1 is the only one that has friction on it. M2, it, there's, there's no air resistance, so there's no friction at all. So now we're going to take this and plug it in right there. So now we have this. M2, oops, that's M2G is equal to M1GUS. And I want you to notice something can cancel out. The gravities can cancel out, and this, quite frankly, our coefficient of friction in this case will just be M2 divided by M1 this. And that will tell us the minimum uh, coefficient of static friction for this system not to move. Okay. All right. So that's very, very important. So you pretty much it's just a ratio of M2 over M1. Okay. All right. Now, part C of this problem. So part C is determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. So now um, the block system is giving a little bit of a push. So someone's taking M2, and remember it's not moving, and then they're going to kind of give it a little nudge. So that kinetic or that static friction will turn into kinetic, and the system will accelerate downwards. OK? 
okay? So what is the acceleration of the M1 block? So what's interesting is the acceleration of the M1 block will be equal to the acceleration of the M2 block, okay? Because they are connected. They are a system, okay? If one of them moves, the other one has to move, okay? So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing to find the acceleration. Now remember, there's only two forces acting on this, and that was M2 times gravity minus the force of friction, which we said was U M1G. So this is my the weight of two minus the force of friction. And the tensions will cancel out equals M1 plus M2 all over A. All right, so this is just Newton's second law. Summation of all the forces equals MA. And again, here's my summation of all my forces. And here is the mass. Remember, this is the mass of the system. And this is the acceleration of the system. So again, remember that Newton's second law is more or less kind of like a, an idea. And this equation is not constant for all of your example. You just can't use F equals MA. Um, you got to find it. You got a summation of all your forces and whatnot. That's why free body diagrams are so important. So now we have this is asking for the acceleration of the system. Okay, so let's 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 pretty this up. Notice we have a g right here, so we can factor that out. So g will be equal to m two minus mu m one equals m one plus m two a. And solving for the acceleration, we can actually get this. G is equal to m two minus mu m one divided by m1 plus m2 and that was giving us our acceleration okay so this is also the so now we're going to solve for the tension okay so if we understand that um, going back to this um, we know our acceleration of our system okay and the acceleration was just g m 2 minus mu m1 all over m1 plus m2. All right, and the next thing we need is we find the tension. That's right, that's our acceleration. We're going to isolate the uh, m, the block hanging on the uh, right hand side of the equation because that's going to give us the easiest uh, way to do this. So this is the m2 block. So you have m2 times gravity. And the reason being is you only have two forces acting on this. We'll say this is positive and this is negative. So now we're going to isolate this block, and when you do, you don't care about the rest of the problem. You only care about this. So we look at this. You have M2 times gravity, so Newton's second law, minus tension equals M2 times A. So we're going to solve for T. So it will be M2 times G minus, oh, sorry, M2 times A equals T. So now we're going to take this, and we're going to shove it in right there on that acceleration. So all this jazz comes over right there. And we get this, M2 times gravity minus M2 times G M2 minus mu M1 all over M1 plus M2 equals T. And there you go. That is actually our, um, I should say, correct answer per se. Um, I know it looks kind of messy, um, but this would be an acceptable answer for finding the tension uh, for this system. So I hope this video helps, and if so, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more physics content. Thank you all, have a great day.